of the most insane coworker you ever had. You know, the one who breaks every rule, who's been fired from every job they've ever had, who everyone agrees is a maniac. They got him? Now what if they told you they were going to cure cancer? More outrageous nonsense? Or the forethought of a genius? Nearly six decades ago, one of these madmen came pretty darn close to a complete cure in just 10 years. Let me introduce you to Emil Freireich, rogue doctor, rule breaker, and lifesaver. Emil Freireich, or J as he was called, was everything you'd want a mad scientist to be. He made unreasonable demands, he ignored the rules, even his bosses couldn't rein him in. And if you didn't bypass the rules too and do as he asked instead, he'd make a scene by screaming, MURDERER! Then making you cry in front of your colleagues. It's like house. Only, like, real. He got fired a lot. Outside of work wasn't much better. Like the time he got drunk, crashed through a dining room table, and had to be carried out by the clinical director of the National Cancer Institute, and a lowly clinical associate. So what's the distinction between a forgotten troublemaker who fades off into obscurity and a legendary hero remembered in the history books? Largely, whether or not you were right. And J. Freireich was usually right. Big time. In the 1950s, Freireich was working on the Pediatric Leukemia Award at the National Cancer Institute. At that time, cancer wards were hopeless places. Doctors didn't even want to be there, let alone the patients. Treatment options were limited and relatively ineffective. Patients usually didn't make it out alive. In fact, many bled to death before they could even receive treatment. The wards were covered in blood. The bed sheets, the walls, the nurses' uniforms. It was gruesome. Leukemia leaves patients with a lack of platelets, the part of your blood that helps it clot. At the time, platelet transfusions were considered an abomination. Doctors had to give children such large quantities of blood that they risked heart failure. And sometimes it didn't even work. Freireich realized he not only had to stop the horrific suffering of these young children from bleeding to death, but he also had to keep them alive long enough to give them hope for treatment. He began experiments mixing his own blood with patients' blood. That was bound to raise some eyebrows. Finding that fresh blood was key to stopping the bleeding, Freireich got 30 volunteers to give blood transfusions directly to leukemia patients, keeping them alive and well enough to get treatment. His boss received complaints about these unsanctioned transfusions and told him to basically knock it off. And Freireich summarily ignored him, saying he didn't want to work someplace where they didn't want to save lives. Not only did he continue with the blood transfusions, he was soon working with an engineer to develop a machine to improve the process. They hold the patent on the blood cell separator that's now used in blood banks around the world, making transfusions for patients like those with leukemia easier and safer. Freireich was right. And while he considers this his greatest legacy, most people actually know him from the episode, the one where he wanted to poison kids. Let me rephrase. He wanted to give sick and dying children high doses of multiple drugs, hear me out, that would make them even sicker. Okay, what I meant is, he wanted to go against established protocol, maybe buck the system a little bit, try out a method that hadn't yet been proved safe on young children. Okay, how about the one where he revolutionizes chemotherapy? Freireich and his team sounded nuts to their colleagues, but for him, it wasn't really that crazy. A multi-drug regimen had been successfully used against another difficult-to-treat disease, tuberculosis. With cancer, drugs were given one at a time, until they stopped working. Then they'd move on to the next, and the next, and so on, until there were no more drugs to try. Remember, these were kids, and the drugs were already hard for their little bodies to take individually. But based on the success with TB, Freireich and his team thought that the only way to cure cancer was by using three or four of these toxic drugs at a time. The medical community was scandalized. These guys were at best rogue scientists, and at worst, attempting murder. But Freireich became a doctor to save lives. Specifically, he wanted to cure leukemia, a diagnosis that was a death sentence. And sometimes rules got in the way of his mission. He thought strict procedures just made people scared. A failure, sure, 
but also of success. I am arguing that 10 lives lost to inactivity is worse than one life lost to an experimental treatment, he said. I'm arguing that the best way to spread knowledge is to speak the truth bluntly. It took five years of testing before they were able to administer the drug protocol, abbreviated VAMP, to their young patients. During this time, Freireich and his team's presentations to his hospital colleagues were like a sideshow. They were literally heckled, with other doctors shouting at them about their butcher shop and meat market. Hey, boo! Boo! The greater medical community scoffed and heckled them from afar as well. Their team and their ideas were dubbed the Society of Jabbering Idiots. But here's why he's known as a genius rather than a madman. He was right all along. Again. Patients began to go into lasting remissions. They modified drugs, tried different combinations. More patients were cured. Multi-agent chemotherapy is now used to treat nearly every cancer. And ALL, the cancer Freireich was focused on, it has a 90% cure rate today. At the time of this recording, Freireich is 93 years old and still working, teaching, and consulting. He also still believes that rules are still standing in the way of treating disease. He has said, I want to cure cancer. There is nothing else. I will not stop until I die. Let's hope not. Thank you for joining me today. I want to mention that much of my research came from the first-hand account of another pioneer, Dr. Vincent DeVita, in his book, the Death of Cancer, which I highly recommend. To go even further down an internet rabbit hole on platelet transfusions, the other amazing doctors and scientists who worked on multi-agent chemotherapy, like Emil Fry, Gordon Zubrod, and James Holland, or anything else we talked about today, check out the links below. It's like house. Only, like, real. No, it's not lupus!